fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! The Lone Ranger was busy preparing the evening meal in the camp which he shared with his Indian companion, Tonto. The masked man looked up expectantly as Tonto, who had gone to the mission on an errand, approached the camp at a fast pace. Oh, Scott, oh, fella, oh, fella, oh, Tai Kimasabi. Tai, you made a quick trip, Tonto. Ah, uh, Padre have letter for Lone Ranger. Him say it may be important. Letter come yesterday. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's from St. Louis. Let's see. Well, this is important. Uh, what did it say? This is from a Mr. Farrell, a high government official, Tonto. He's in St. Louis and wants me to meet him there as soon as possible. Oh, and how we go to St. Louis? There's a cattle train leaving early tomorrow. They need cowhands to go along. I'll wear a disguise and we'll get jobs for the trip. You'll be able to take Silver and Scout along then. Mm, that's good. I'll get busy with that disguise, and we'll ride to town and make a deal. As days passed, Mr. Farrell, the government official in St. Louis, began to doubt that the Lone Ranger had received his urgent message then one evening, as he sat in the library going over official papers, a man's servant entered the room. What is it, Charles? A man to see you, sir. Looks like a cattleman or rancher from the Western Territory. He said to tell you the Padre delivered your message, sir. Uh, show him in at once, Charles. Yes, sir, right away. Mr. Farrell will see you, sir. Come right in. Thank you. You at last... But I was told you wore a mask. I've disguised myself as a rancher to avoid questions, Mr. Farrell. Good idea. Do sit down. Thanks. Well, sir, why have you sent for me? They told me in Washington I could depend upon you to help in a matter of vital importance to our government. I'll do all I can to help. Now, if you'll explain just what... I'm going to ask you to undertake a very dangerous mission that will take you to New Orleans, sir. New Orleans? That's a little out of my territory. 
But of course, if the government has... It's of great importance to our country. I see. You'll excuse me, I know, but before I go into detail, may I ask if you have the letter with you, the letter I sent to the padre? Well, yes, I have it right here. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Since you're in disguise, I wanted to be sure. I understand. This is the situation. Yes. I have a very important document that must be delivered to the governor in New Orleans. Others know of this document. One courier has been killed because of it. Go on, please. There's known to be political intrigue in that territory. An open move against it would, no doubt, be effective. But the ringleaders would escape apprehension. With this document in his hands, the governor can act quickly to apprehend those men who are named therein and to safeguard his office. I see. My every move is watched. I knew of no one else to whom I might entrust this valuable document, sir. I'll do my best to deliver it, Mr. Farrell. If it becomes known that you carry it, your life will be in constant danger. I understand, sir. The river packet leaves at dawn. Yes, since you have disguised yourself so well as a rancher, you can arrange your passage in cabin when you go aboard without arousing suspicion. Here is the document I spoke of. I'll do my best, sir. My friend, not only does that envelope contain the names of the ringleaders, but it also contains vital and secret communications to the governor from the president himself. It must not fall into the wrong hands. It won't if I can help it. Uh, it uh, wouldn't be wise for the governor to send a conveyance to meet you at the boat landing. So you'll have to I find... I brought my own horse with me, sir. Good. Go directly to the governor's mansion from the landing. Yes. The governor is of French descent. In a duel with a noted swordsman, he lost a finger from his right hand. I see. Make sure he alone receives that envelope. I'll make certain the man I give the envelope to is the governor. Be careful, sir. Very careful. The men who would keep you from succeeding are clever and extremely ruthless. Uh -huh. So be on guard constantly. Thanks for the warning, Mr. Farrell. Well, I'll leave now. I want to get aboard the packet as soon as possible. You'll have no trouble in that disguise. Many ranchers and merchants travel on the packet with their mounts. Goodbye, sir. And Godspeed. Thank you, Mr. Farrell, and goodbye. Easy, Silver. Is there a big foot? Come on, fellow. Oh, Silver. Same for you and Scout. Ah, me do it. I'll oh, start. Plenty close, Kimasabi. Yes. There him go. We follow, maybe. Oh, no, let him go, Toto. There's no time to follow. That was a warning that my mission is already known. From now on, anything can happen. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Two days and nights passed uneventfully as the river packet made its way down the Mississippi toward New Orleans. The Lone Ranger, to all appearances a gentleman of wealth, spent his time lolling about the upper deck or resting in his cabin. But never for a moment did he relax his vigilance. Meantime, Tonto, wrapped in a blanket on the lower deck, kept his ears and his eyes open for signs of trouble. Each night, unobserved by others and moving like a shadow... Tonto made his way to the Lone Ranger's cabin where they compared notes. It was the evening of the third night that Tonto had something to report when they met. Just before sun go down, tall man, who look like half a breed, him come down, look at horses. Well, him stop, look at silver, then him hurry up stairway. 
The only man who would recognize Silver would be the one who shot at us in St. Louis. Ah, that right. The man you saw must be he. Ah, and if not good, him on boat. Knowing that he is on board is in our favor, Toto. Oh, that right. I'll be on guard more than ever. You'd better go below now. Ah, Nico, but you watch out, Kimasabi. Don't worry. I won't be taken by surprise. I'll be ready and waiting for him. It was almost midnight when the tall half-breed Tonto had mentioned was in a cabin not far from that occupied by the Lone Ranger. He was talking to a smooth-looking individual who might pass for one of the gamblers who frequented the riverboats of that day. Now I am most sure the one I point out to you is the hombre who comes from Senor Farrell's blocky. What makes you so sure, Ramon? The big white stallion which you ride. She is on this boat. Already I have seen him. I guess that's the hombre we want, then. Si. You know the cabin he's in, don't you? Si, senor. And I get from the cabin boy a key to open the door to that cabin. Good work, Ramon. But how do you expect to get the document he carries? He looks like a strong hombre to me. <laughs> Ramon, he is also strong, Senor Blocky. Also, he is a plan to not have trouble with the big Senor in Cabin. He's sure here. to have a gun. Oh, seguramente. But guns is of no use to nobody who can't shoot it. What do you mean? This knife. She will quiet the big Senor while he sleeps. Then Ramon gets the papers and brings them here to you. Now, your plan ought to work, Ramon. Within an hour, the boat will dock at New Orleans. We can get ashore long before his death is discovered. Most of the passengers sleep on till daybreak. See, si, that is right. And the big senor, he will not expect trouble now, since so far he has been safe. That's right. Now, Ramon, he go to the cabin of the big senor. We will get the document, and because of this little knife, he will never, never know. Except for the muffled, throbbing sound made by the moving boat, all was quiet in the Lone Ranger's cabin. The moonlight filtering through the shuttered cabin window vaguely showed the outline of the figure under the blankets on the bunk. The faint click of the lock and the slight creak of the opening door were the only indications that someone was entering stealthily, moving like a soundless shadow. Raymond went slowly toward the bunk. His eyes made out the outlined figure. And in the darkness, a sadistic smile played about his lips as he surveyed his would-be victim. In a moment, he stood beside the bunk. Slowly, he raised his arm high above his head, and a gleam of moonlight momentarily struck the blade in his hand. Then, in a fanatical surge of strength, he plunged the sharp blade downward. Ah, it is done. Ramon has won him. All right, we'll have to try it again. Uh, what? Don't move your cover. What? But the figure on the bunk... I'm prepared for you, killer. Some tightly rolled bedding under the blanket fooled you for the moment. Not enough for me to get the drop on you. But wait, senor, wait. It's a big mistake. Quiet. Now, will I have this gun in your back or use the other hand to light the lamp? Get a match. There. Guess I'd better... Better reach, mister, and quick. Well... Should have known you'd have a partner. Ah, uh, Senor Blocky, you come just in time. I was afraid you might get into trouble, Ramon. Now, while I keep this hombre covered, search him for that document. Well, of course I have most forgot. Well, first, Ramon, he gets back the knife. That devil with a knife, Ramon. Search him for that document. This big Senor I have discovered is one very smart hombre. Folks getting ready to dock in New Orleans. Get the document, See, let's get out. Senor Blocky, now I make this search. But I am be most careful so big Senor not like for the grab, Ramon. With his knife held close to his side like this. And with this hand, I search into his pocket. So, one more, senor, and the knife she perhaps make one big slip. Ah, yes, the document she is now ours, Blocky. Good. Now that you found it, let's get away from here, Prado. No, that is not good. What do you mean? This big senor, it is better that we make sure he not try more funny business, no? You have the document. What more do you want? Your life, senor. This time the knife will strike into your heart. Then we toss you into the river so you'll bother us no longer. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger stood with hands upraised and looked into the evil face before him, he knew that the next few seconds meant life or death. His gun was still in his upraised right hand, but he knew that any move to forestall Raymond's intention would bring a bullet into his back from Blackie's gun. At that moment, a strange sound came from the doorway behind him. The Lone Ranger immediately recognized Tonto's signal. Without hesitation, he suddenly brought his gun down hard at the back of Raymond's head. Oh, 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 oh. Good work, Tonto. Get an arm around neck, from the back, and him drop. Come on, oh, quick. That's enough, Tonto. Oh. Tie both of them up and leave them here. Uh, we'll notify the captain. Uh, You'll have them taken care of by the sheriff. Uh, We'd better hurry. The boat's docking. Lucky you came along, Tonto. I had the document back, and nothing's to stop me from delivering it to the governor. All right, let's hurry. After turning Raymond and Blackie over to the custody of the captain, the Lone Ranger met Tonto on the lower deck. Deciding that there was no further need to hide the fact that they were together, they left the boat leading Silver and Scout. Now we can ride, Tonto. He's a big fellow. Ready. Come on, Silver. Come up, Scout. Captain said the governor's mansion is straight ahead, about a mile. Ah. Soon mission be finished, King Sabi. Yes. I'll be glad to hand over the document. The mission was much more simple than I expected, Toto. That's right. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver. Oh, Scout. Oh, fella. Sit down, fella. Easy a minute. You wait out here, Toto. Ah. It's good we get to place for Governor's Day. You not have any more trouble, Kimasabi. I'll be glad to give this envelope to the Governor. Well, I'll go inside now. I won't be long. Within a few minutes, the Lone Ranger, whose features were still carefully disguised, was admitted to the large hall of the Governor's mansion by a servant and was asked to wait. Soon he was approached by a tall, dark man. Well, monsieur, I have been told that you wish to see the governor personally. That's right. I must ask you to explain the nature of your business. I brought an envelope, which I'll deliver only to the governor himself. So? Then uh, you must be the emissary he is expecting. Perhaps. Will you take me to him? But of course, monsieur. Uh, there is one thing you must do before I take you to his excellency. Oh? What's that? You are wearing guns, monsieur. Uh, no one is permitted to carry firearms into the governor's presence. It is customary for us to take such precautions, monsieur. I'm sure you understand. Well, His I... His excellency has many enemies. If you are the person you say you are, you should not object. Uh, you can leave your guns here on the table and uh, pick them up on the way out, monsieur. Very well. I notice you are a sword. Oui, monsieur. It is part of my uniform as one of His Excellency's military aides. Now, if you'll follow me up the staircase, I'll take you to the governor's executive chamber. (laughs) 
Meantime, in the executive chamber behind the governor's desk, a wiry yet forceful man sat glaring at the stockily built uniformed aide who stood before him. Are you certain the boat has docked, Fallon? Oui, Monsieur Dupre. I made certain before I rode here with the news. Then we may expect a courier who is bringing the document, we? Oui? Before the morning is gone, he should arrive here at the mansion. Mm. Uh, preparations have been made for his arrival? Oui, monsieur. Francois is waiting below to receive him. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, remember, if matters do not go as we expect, there must be no gunplay. We must not arouse the servants. Our swords can take care of any emergency, monsieur. Well, Francois, you bring news? Oui. Your carrier is outside. Show him in at once. The governor will see you. Thanks. I'll be very glad to see him. Oh, monsieur, it is good to see that you have arrived safely. The governor was quite concerned about you. Most certainly, that is so, my friend. As a matter of fact, governor, the trip was almost uneventful. That is most surprising. I am to assume that you, monsieur, have brought a certain document from Saint Louis, which is to be delivered to me, n'est-ce pas? Yes, that's right. I did bring such a document. Then I congratulate you, my friend. I offer you my hand, monsieur. Of course. Now, without further delay, you may deliver the document you carry. It is of the utmost importance. Yes, I know. I understand it's important to quite a few people. We, oui, we, oui, of course. You do have it? Yes, but... Ah, but of course. <laughs> Uh, fellow, uh, wait outside. Oh, we oui, monsieur, I shall be waiting outside. Now, my friend, we are alone. I know, but I'm still not giving up the document. Uh, preposterous. Were you not directed to deliver that document to the governor in New Orleans? Yes, that's what I intend to do, sir. What do you mean by that? You aren't the governor. <laughs> Well, what gives you such an idea, monsieur? Your hand. The governor has a finger missing on his right hand. Something you overlooked, my friend. I'll leave. Attendez, monsieur. You draw a sword against me? But of course. <laughs> my friend, you must not think of going without giving up the document you are sent to deliver. I am thinking of just that. As the Lone Ranger, unarmed, stood facing the unsheathed sword in the hand of the determined man before him, he realized that his life depended upon quick thought and action. Out of the corner of his eye, he noted that crossed swords decorated the space above a large mantel on one side of the room. Stalling for time, he slowly backed toward the mantel as he spoke. Well, since I'm unarmed, I don't seem to have much of a chance against you. <laughs> So you back away, mon ami. It is right that you fear a sword in my hand. I'm an expert swordsman, I assure you. You don't have to be an expert against one who isn't armed. I'm determined to get that document, monsieur. Backing away will not help you. You cannot escape. Maybe not, but I can defend myself with this. So you trick me. But you will be no match for me, monsieur. Give me that document or take the consequences. I have decided to keep it. Then I will take it from you. No, you won't. <laughs> you are sorry now. You have not your gun, my friend. I need this <laughs> practice, monsieur. Then fight, you fool, and learn of your mistake. <laughs> yes, this has gone far enough. Take that. And that. And this. No. No. I am disarmed. I'm down. Mercy, please. The sword pointed at your throat says you'll tell me where the governor is. Oui, 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 I will tell you. He's safe. He is tied up in his room, monsieur. Where is that room? At the foot of the main staircase. I swear it, monsieur. Take me to him. Oui, monsieur. Come. Attendez. Do not let him escape. Why, you... No, I didn't be alone. Oui. As the Lone Ranger crossed swords once more, this time with two adversaries, both of whom seemed to be experts, he realized that he was fighting for his life. 
for it was plain to see that these men, enemies who had gone so far as to actually invade the governor's mansion itself, were pressing for every advantage and would show no mercy. The Lone Ranger's one thought was to force his way to the governor's room at the foot of the broad, curving staircase. He pressed ever forward along the hallway, forcing the two panting men to the stairway. Then gradually, by the swiftness and dexterity of his blows, and by the use of a brilliant and continual thrust and parry, his amazed and sweating foes were forced down step by step. First one, then the other of the two expert swordsmen marveled at the superb technique. They were amazed by the speed and skill of the Lone Ranger in handling his sword as he pressed them ever downward step by step. He is the devil incarnate. But he's not supposed to be a swordsman. He's from the western plains. To pray, he said so. There is mistake somewhere. I'll try to prove you made the mistake, you fools. For a few minutes more, the Lone Ranger beat back the two men. Then lunging forward, he sent the sword of one of them flying through the air. Don't let him kill me, Phelon. Beat him back. Run him through. No, no, no. I keep up, monsieur. We ask mercy. See, I drop my sword at your feet. Okay, Mr. Hobby. That's plenty good fight. No, no. Watch him a moment. Ah, me watch him. Who? Who are you, monsieur? I have heard the fight. Here, let me untie you, Governor. This knot's not bad. This one... Now, this one. There you are. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I have just noticed your hand, sir. My missing finger, perhaps? Uh, it is nothing. It proves you're the governor. We, oui. we, oui, I am the governor, monsieur. Just to pray he was my secretary. I trusted him. The others, they were my aides. I suspected intrigue. And when they heard of the document, it would be proof against them. Here, here are the documents, sir. Excellent, excellent. You are a brave man. This document names those who were plotting against the state. Yes. And tells where they have hidden arms and ammunition. Ah. I shall notify the troops and spoil their plans once and for all. I see. Now I want to see those whom you have vanquished, monsieur. All right. Come with me, Governor. That man is not the one we heard about. The man from the Western Plains will bring us a secret document. We were misinformed, Francois. He's the devil himself, Phelan. Monsieur, who is the one who stands guard? The Indian. He is my friend and yours, Governor. I... Uh, there are many horsemen stopping outside. Who? Uh, me send cook. Tell them, get soldiers. Them come. Good. Uh, me bring your guns from Hall Table, Kimasabi. Thanks. This one on. Now that everything's taken care of, Governor, we'll be leaving. Come, Tato. Adios, sir. Yeah. He has waited to send out for us, Francois. Oui. And you pray for the courier was to be the one from the Western Plains. He was much mistaken. He is indeed the one from the Western Plains. Out there, he's known as the Lone Ranger. I'm silver. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 